It can feel like the climate is changing faster than we can react. But there are people doing good work. There is a climate crew. Tundra Landscape is a really cool place to work. It's got a very short growing season. The snow melts, flowers come out, birds come up here to breed for the summer. It's full of beauty. It's really interesting to study from a scientific perspective. Permafrost is part of the tundra ecosystem here at Sermolik National Park. Permafrost is a mixture of rock, soil, and water that stays frozen for a period of two years or more. It's also important to focus on the active layer, which is the soil above the permafrost that melts in the summer and freezes again in the winter. And it's important to monitor because it can have effects on plants, animals, the wider landscape, and it can even contribute to climate change as it begins to thaw. Tracking changes in the tundra ecosystem. So as part of our monitoring program here at Sermolik National Park, we use three different sources of information to help us build a complete understanding of what's happening with tundra ecosystems. The first is an active layer monitoring grid that we probe with a metal probe stuck into the ground. And that helps tell us the depth of the active layer, how far down the ground is frozen at the same time every year. The second measurement that we take is with a frost tube, and that tells us in the last year how far down the active layer melted at its deepest point. The third measurement that we take is with a series of temperature sensors that are located below the ground, and we've got one located above the ground as well. And those give us temperature readings every two hours for the whole year round. Field work is just one way of monitoring what's happening with the tundra. Using satellite imagery, we track changes in the tundra environment, such as by looking at greenness and changes in plant community composition over time. The Inuit Knowledge Working Group helps to provide information about observed landscape changes with tundra ecosystems over time on a longer time scale. This is a lot more snow than I was expecting to see for so late in June. We should just do a visual inspection, walk around the perimeter. We can just uh, put back any pegs that, uh, that have been knocked over and otherwise save the, uh, the probing inside the grid when we come back in, in July. Okay. So is it in? I'll just make note that uh, when we come back, we might have to look a little bit for this one. But seeing that this cap is solidly on is impressive. Uh, it looks like the foxes made an attempt to chew it off, but they were not successful. <laughs> Let's pull out our uh, grid map here. I think uh, just standing outside the grid here, we can do a couple of test holes and just get a sense of where the active layer is at. I'm expecting it would probably be a little bit shallower than uh, when we're typically here midsummer when the active layer has thawed down to uh, closer to its maximum depth. Yeah, that's all permafrost. It's pretty much in contact with the surface right now. It's three and a half centimeters. Whoa. Uh, one of our Inuit Knowledge Working Group elders said this year is colder than the other years. They said it's normal because they've seen that in the past. This year the ice is really thick. It's neat to see the uh, changes year to year. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Right now we're still in the process of collecting baseline data about the active layer over time and that takes quite a number of years to develop and understand if there are any trends that we're seeing. Oh, look at these nice clusters of uh, Pearl Mountain saxifrage. What do they taste like, Terry? Between strawberry and blueberry. Oh yeah. It's a nice thing to note down because seeing a uh, plant flowering for the first time gives us a sense of when something's starting up in the year, a regular annual occurrence. So for flowers, for birds that are coming up here to nest, gives us some more information about how and if things might be changing. With the ground getting warmer, a few of the traditional sod houses are beginning to collapse. Local Inuit community members, along with our Parks Canada crew, did an excavation to collect and preserve as many artifacts as possible. We did the archaeological site and one of the sod houses we digged was the sod house that you, you lived in. When we did the dig, how did you feel? Like? When we dug up some of the artifacts in the surface as I saw more of them and how they were built, I recalled my childhood, and it was as if I was back there. It's made out of ivory? Yes, either narwhal or walrus tusks were used. The person making the comb would add personalized markings so it could be identified. If it was lost and found, you would know who it belonged to. <laughs> 
How do you feel about the current partnerships on monitoring changes? In terms of Similic National Park, I really notice their efforts as I'm also a committee member. They adhere to the principle of environmental stewardship to ensure we can retain our current environment longer into the future. Working in Parks Canada in Nunavut is a really special opportunity to uh, working directly with Indigenous partners to monitor the effects of climate change, to understand better what's happening in our ecosystems, to look for solutions and ways that we can mitigate and adapt. Climate change is a big important issue, but we can find some hope in that the more that we know and understand, the more power that we'll have to act.